In this video, you will see how you can automatically fine-tune controller loop gains for your uh, DC link voltage, neutral point voltage, and current controllers for a Vienna rectifier based power factor corrective. In the closed loop simulation model here, uh, we have the plant model containing the Vienna rectifier and the switch mode power supply to convert a three-phase 120 volt AC supply to a regulated 400 volt DC supply for the loads. Uh, the feedback compensator subsystem here for the switch mode power supply contains four loops. Two for tracking the reference DQ axis currents, one for tracking the DC link output voltage, and one neutral point voltage control loop to maintain the DC link capacitor voltages. In traditional tuning of these control loops, you would have to tune one loop at a time manually, which tends to be a difficult and time consuming process. The closed loop PID auto tuner block uh, in Simulink control design will help us simplify and speed up this process by tuning all the four PID controllers in a single desktop simulation running in a closed loop. Essentially, it runs uh, auto tuning experiments for the DQ axis current, output voltage, and neutral point voltage loops by injecting perturbations, recording the output, estimating the plant frequency response and tuning the PI controller parameters. The initial PID controller gains stored in the data store memory blocks do not provide a good tracking performance. Let's check the performance of the DC link voltage and neutral point voltage controllers with different loads. With a balanced load across the buses, we see a slow rise time. When individual loads are introduced later on, the neutral point voltage controller does not perform as expected, causing an imbalance of the DC link capacitor voltages, and therefore causing the link voltage to diverge from the reference. To improve these responses by tuning the controller loops, let's set up the controller loops with the closed loop PID auto tuner blocks. Uh, let's first start with the D axis current control loop. We will place the block in between the controller output and the input to the plant and this allows the block to inject sinusoidal perturbation signals at the plant input and measure the resulting plant output during the closed loop experiment. When the experiment stops, the block computes the PID gains based on the plant frequency response estimated at a small number of frequency points near the desired bandwidth. We can then update these gains in the respective PID controller block. With the block placed in the block dialog of the closed loop PID auto tuner block, under tuning, we will set the target bandwidth of around 3000 radians per second with a target phase margin of 60 degrees. Under the experiment section for the current loop, the plant type is stable uh, with the positive sign. We will set the sign amplitudes of the perturbation to 0.6. There is no exact formula behind setting this value, only that it must be small enough not to change the operating point, but sufficiently excite the system dynamics. Let's choose around 10% of what the nominal control output is at a steady state. Now this block is all set. Similarly, we will add the closed loop PID auto tuner blocks for the other loops and set the tuning requirements. For the Q axis controller, the closed loop PID auto tuner block has been set up with the bandwidth and phase margin of 3000 radians per second and 60 degrees, respectively, and the sign amplitude to 0 0.19. The DC link voltage loop will run almost 10 times slower than the current loops, so the bandwidth has been set to 400 radians per second. The phase margin is set to 60 degrees and the sinusoidal perturbation amplitude to 1. Finally, the neutral point voltage controller has the bandwidth, phase margin and amplitude of perturbations set to 20,000 radians per second, 60 degrees and 0 0.01 respectively. With these blocks placed in each of the four controller loops, the experiment start stop times for these loops are set using step blocks. We will run the experiments after the system has reached a steady state, first for the inner current loops, followed by the outer DC link voltage loop, and then the neutral point voltage loop. 
from prior simulations the system reaches a steady state at around 0.6 seconds so we will run the experiment sequentially after this point in time first for the inner d axis current controller from 0.65 to 0.75 seconds using the step commands here a conservative estimate for setting the experiment time duration would be 200 over the set bandwidth Similarly, we will follow it by tuning the Q-axis current controller after letting the transients to settle and running the experiment from 0.8 to 0.9 seconds. Likewise, we will follow this for the DC link voltage controller from 0.95 to 1.45 seconds and the neutral point voltage controller from 1.7 to 1.72 seconds. With this setup, we can just run the simulation. The experiments will run on the closed loop PID auto tuner blocks, will tune and update the gains which we see here in these display blocks. Let's now run the simulation again with these new gains and see how it performs with the same load changes. Here we see the performance of the controller with the, the initial gains in red and the new gains in green. The response time has considerably improved here when the balance load is introduced. And in the latter part of the simulation, with the individual loads being introduced, the neutral point voltage controller does a good job of keeping the voltage neutral point stable compared to the older controller gains. So in this video, we saw how to use the closed loop PID auto tuner blocks to tune the controller loop gains of a Vienna rectifier based power factor corrector in a single desktop simulation. With this block, you can generate C, C++ or even PLC code and deploy it to hardware, which will allow you to auto-tune gains in real time against hardware.